Hi, I'm Ryan Moody, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. Today I'm talking to legendary Australian lure maker Dave Killer Lee. Dave is the founder of the iconic lure brand Killer Lure, which he sold back in the 90s. He now weaves his magic under the brand name Old Dog Lures, which are handcrafted and painted by Dave here in Australia for Australian conditions. I've been catching big barra on lures crafted by Dave since I was a teenager, including my very first metre plus barra and most notably my 2000th saltwater metery a couple of years ago now. Crafting lures that don't just look pretty but actually catch fish is an art form and involves a ton of trial and error. And that's why we're here today, to talk to Dave about some of his new additions to the Old Dog Lures kennel and take a look at what went into their development. So Dave, tell us about your new pups mate. And how did you come up with the idea for the new lures? Um, as I said to you before, uh, and you mentioned it in your introduction, for me, lure design is more about pragmatism. I like lures that work. They do what they're supposed to do. Too. Yeah, and exactly. Usually someone will come to me and ask me to, for, to design a lure to do a particular job. Mm. We do it. For instance, you with the, the mutt. The mutts. And um, we did that. And now we transfer that technology to the, or that, idea to the GM100, which is now killing the pigs. So that's that's a fantastic lure, little lure, isn't it? Yeah. I think I'm probably using it more now than the mutts, the mutt, and yeah. even the 100 millimetres is catching the big fish too, yeah. which is great. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's an example of how we come up with it. Yeah. Recently someone came to me and wanted a, a mutt that'll run at six foot. Yep. Um, so we've designed now the mutt to do just that, and primarily for trolling. Shallow rock bars and things like yeah, that, yeah. and maybe snaggy line banks on the outside edges of snags Four and things. holes in the middle of the creek where the fish are sitting down. Yeah. That three metre depth mark. And Just looking up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What we found back in the day when we built the six inch barrow bait, Cole Cordingly came to me and said to me, I want to, you know, can you do something with a six inch Nilsey? Mm. Which was, a, in my opinion, as I said to you before, it's one of the best barrel lures that was ever produced. And, um, it had its problems because it was produced to catch pike and that in in Europe. In Europe, and the fresh didn't water. Stand up to the big, to the big fish here. So. Yeah, yeah. So we made it with a metal bib, you know, more durable timber, and it took probably twelve months, I suppose, mucking around backwards and forwards, forwards to get it get it to right. Do what he wanted to do. Sure. And it runs at just that right depth. Yeah. For trolling for barrels, so like, yeah. you know, you, what we found is that the barrels will be sitting down low. And if you come in probably a metre, metre and a half above them, they'll come up for it. Oh, know? for sure, definitely. And, um, Especially when they're hungry yeah. <laughs> and they're not sulking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and usually you can talk them into it when they aren't, they want to play with otherwise. You know, like you don't want to jig them or they don't want to respond to jigs or yeah. vibes or whatever. You can talk them well, into it. Well, exactly, there's a certain time of the day where I use the jigs and then as soon as that tide changes, I quite often do change over to trolling. Yeah because yeah. they do a different thing. And Trolling's not as trendy these days as it used to be. As it used to be. Mm. But I reckon in my opinion it's probably one of the most productive ways to catch big barra. Big barra, right definitely yeah. mate. Yes, yeah. it's always been one of my favourite yeah. uh, methods and, yeah. and more so in recent five or six years I've we've been catching the big ones yeah. in the this much water on the shallow hard bodies. Yeah. So. yeah, well that's that's basically how we come up with it. Yeah. We've now been able to change the way we make fishing lures. Mm -hmm. In the old days, lures were primarily made on a lathe. Yep. And the problem with lathes is that when you get a when you get a lure body that comes off a lathe, to give it one piece wire, you have to cut it down the centre. Down the centre. Which is a task on its own to get it. Because then you lose some through. of the thickness of the of the actual lure, don't you? That you originally crafted the blade width you yeah, lose that kind it of exactly right yeah is it oh, and both both halves to meet yeah. up as well it, for sure you know so they cut a slot down it drop mm. a wire in it glue it in and then fill it over the top yep and the problem with that nils is this is one of the problem with nils is, mm. is they used to rip out yeah rapalas do you know all of all the um bolsa lures that yeah. are built like that they Same do that. Thing. rip it out yeah yeah and the other other problem with lathe lures is you've got to drill a hole in them. Mm -hmm. If you want to put weight in it, you've got to put, drill a hole in it. You've got to get it in exactly the right spot. Right spot. On the centre line. Yeah. Then you've got to fill it and all that sort of stuff. So what mm. we're doing now is we're building lures in two halves. Okay. Out of timber. 
similar to plastic. Like that was one of the advantages of plastic. Yes. Is that you could make them exactly the same. You won't get exactly the same with with timber because timbers vary so much in a in a tree, but it'd be pretty bloody close. Yeah, for sure. We can now put weight where we want it. Yep. A lure. And you can get it right every yeah. time. Yeah, you don't exactly. have to worry about it being just offset. Yeah. 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 Like those holes there, if that ball these are these are prototypes because this is a bit deeper than it should have been. But yeah. But um, that ball there is um, 12 mil in diameter. Yeah. We can drill that hole six mil so that that ball sits exactly yeah. on the centre line on the every centre line. time in exactly the same place. Yeah. It's not out by half a mil or nothing. It's no, the spot repeatability on. of this is 0 0.001. <laughs> and and mm. these, as I say, these are prototypes. We're still perfecting this. Yeah. But it's our intention to put full true wires in them. Okay. The other thing we'd be able to do is put long cast weights in them. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't particularly like that mm. thing because I reckon it throws the lure off balance. Yeah. Um, but we'll play with it. Play with it. What we can do, yep. yeah. You never know, mate. You might perfect that. Oh. To the <laughs> <laughs> There's some pretty good efforts at it. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing we're doing is we're mucking around with twitch baits. Now, this is something that I've never really had a lot to do with, stick baits, twitch baits, all that sort of stuff. Sure. But that lure there mm -hmm. is... Um, a mirror lure it comes from the states, mm -hmm. and they're bloody brilliant. Though. Like they're really good. I shouldn't say that, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they are. They're like they're really yeah. good lures. And what I'm trying to do is emulate that action mm -hmm. in a timber lure. Timber lure, with a slightly different shape. Okay. Um, when you use them, they're not they're not high speed retrieve. They're not like. Um, like uh, glide baits that you know you can pull a glide bait and it'll flip pull. around on its side. Yeah. In the, these things are more they're more flash. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you imagine a school of herring around a snag and you can see them flashing. Flashing that. Yeah. yeah. That's what these things are. Oh, like. okay. Awesome. Yeah. So, and it's taken a while to get it right. Like mm. this is this technology that we're using now. If you look at that, that one there. That's mm -hmm. the first one we did. Right. See how see the where the weight it where the the buoyancy is in that lure, like it's it's narrow there. Yes, yes. There, and the buoyancy is there. Yeah, okay. So what we had to do is sort of shift it back. We shifted it forward first a little bit. Right. Because what I wanted to do is sit level in the water, like that. Uh huh. And that one there is the one we've got right. So we've got it. You can see that. And there would have been so many different things to take into account, like the weight of the hooks, yeah. as well when yeah. they're on and all that sort of thing too. So. It's Twelve and a half thousand dollars worth of software up there that does that. Does that? <laughs> well, it's even better. Yeah. yeah so. Because realistically, since the the early days, there's quite a lot of different sorts of lures that have um, come out now too, like the, like the stick baits and the surface lures yeah. and that sort of thing and. Uh, even though these aren't truly a surface lure, they resemble a stick bait, but they're meant for something just that little bit deeper down under the surface. Mm. And uh, yeah, like they're they're more. We're going to do them in a floating and a sinking version. Yeah. And probably a slow sinker and a rapid sinker. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, our three-inch barrow baits back in. It, they were originally designed to troll in Corroboree to compete with the Nilsey spearhead back. Yeah. In the okay. Day. But they are one of the best jigging lures that you ever come across. Yes, mate, I can remember the old days when we used to use the three inch barrow baits. We used to put the split shots in front of them and drop them down the snags and just twitch them like an injured fish. And I guess that's where the twitch bait idea is going to replace that and make it a bit easier. Yeah. So you haven't got to, you're not use, using a bit lure as such. So what other areas, apart from dropping them down around timber and stuff, would you be able to use one of these twitch baits? Oh, you can use them in the drains. You can use them on the flats. You know when you when you. Basic side, side fishing, big fish, yeah. Yeah, well, well you can you can govern the depth of that that yeah. it goes. That's the best yeah. part about it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, and the heavy ones, like the ones that we make, that'll be quite heavy. They'll they'll work in those areas where you've got the deep holes, and you want to get them down to them. Yeah. Uh, so you cast them up current. Yeah. So that, and count your sink down, and use them in. The Do it the same way. Yeah. So there's a number of applications and areas where you can actually use these yeah, things in that all, manner. It's all about using your brain, no? Like, exactly right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. so mate, uh, how much more development have you got to do and when do you think that these might be uh, available on the market? It's hard to tell when they'll be available on the market, but I'll let them go when I'm happy with when them. When you're happy with yeah, them. Well, that's the most important thing, yeah. isn't it? You don't put something out half-cocked, yeah. do you? I've got to, I've got to um, 
get a couple of guys to test them yet and all that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to arrange that. You know, I've got a couple of other blokes as well that, yeah. that sort of do specialise in that In that type of thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that we will set them to and they can trial them. And I could actually that. try them in the areas I fish in that more open water for the, the large fish. Yeah, well, and America, I'll, I'll give that a go. That, like those mirror lures, they've been around for ever. Yeah. And um, they use them on the big tarpon and that on the flats in America. And, yeah. And I could no doubt in my mind that they'd work here for big barrows on the flats. As so. well. Oh, for sure. They look yeah. great, mate. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to giving them a spin, let me tell you. Yeah. Again, all your products over the years, it's... Um, yeah, well, it'd be good. Yeah. As soon as we get it right, like it's, it's taken me about eight iterations to get it to this stage. Yeah. And now I think it'll do what I want it to do. Awesome. So we can now start doing some field testing and see whether it actually produces the goods. Good, mate. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having us in again today, thanks buddy. For coming, yeah. Cheers, mate. So if you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips, we send out via email only, head on over to our website, www.ryanmurdyfishing.com, and sign up for free email updates. Get in the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and we'll see you next time.